Hi everyone, I'm going to take you through another stage of bringing our granny squares together. So all I've done is one row one and row two um, because I've got these to be tinier granny squares and the next thing I'm going to do before I show you how to cluster your granny squares together is obviously we need to make sure that these are all placed in the front um, and we also need to make sure um, that we do one round, another round on the main one and then we can begin working the others as well. So let me just find my end which I thought I'd found two seconds ago which I've now dispersed at that pin. So I'm going to work it around with a base colour which I've chosen as being cream because this is the colour I think will work right well as an overall. So if you just notice there, if you're on the beginner's group, I will be showing this into both. Um, Make sure obviously your wall is in your fingers, tail end towards you. Before I, um, I don't necessarily slip knot, what I do is I make sure my wall is in place on my fingers. I then anchor it between that finger and my thumb as if you're making the chain, but my make is already in place. And I'm going to start in the chain space just here. I'm going to pick up the yarn like so to create a, a makeshift loop. Do not move your fingers, keep them anchored. Pick up your yarn and yarn three, and then just do a few more chains. So we want three in total, so there you go. I'm going to do a corner cluster, which means I've got to do two trebles now. And then I'm going to do another two chains, because our cluster is already there. Another three trebles to create our first completed um, cluster with three trebles. And then I'm going to just chain one, work into that next chain space with another cluster. Sorry, I've just moved the a little bit because it's in my way. Um, quite another treble. Okay, another chain space. Go into my corner like so. Two, three. Right, another corner cluster, so chain two, and another corner cluster within that same space. Okay. Um, chain one, sorry. Another cluster. So I'm completing this square with the actual row that is going to be part of my base um, so this is how you start by finishing one square with the finished row now you can make your squares as big or as small as you want them to be okay I'll position my one again just because I've moved chain one quite common practice to keep moving your wall so it's not always going to stay in the same position so even though it feels unsecure you can wrap it around your middle fingers or any fingers you want twice so onto another corner cluster here one two now I'm working pretty fast I will slow down when I get to the next stage So if I wanted to, I could wrap it around my finger again like that. So it looks like a ring, but it all depends um, on how it feels. That to me feels too tight now, so I'm going to have to move my finger. But there we go, it's a bit better now. When I tight, when I personally, when I wrap it around my finger, I end up releasing my fingers a little bit more to loosen the tension, just naturally, so it can flow through. Now we need to find our chain three. So we've got one, two, three. Find the first loop. There it is. Then oh, find the first loop and then find the second loop, which I think is an easier way to do it. Now I've got two loops over. Slip stitch, I've gone yarn through and yarn through again. There you go. Quite a nice bit of a tail so you can sew it in after. Again, you need to make sure that both pieces are facing each other. So we're going to work this one now. So yarn through. 
Actually, no, sorry. Ignore that one for a moment. Oh, I've twisted my arm. Let's get it. So we're working into the front here. So we're going to start as we did before. One, two, three. Oh, no, I see what I've done there. Excuse me. Poor mistake there. So yarn three, two, three. I didn't double check that I'd done my yarn properly. So you may end up doing that. So make sure towel comes from here, your wool goes. Work more that way. Then you won't make that mistake. So cut our first cluster and this is where we chain one and we're going to work our first one so slip stitch coming all the yarn all the way through sorry I'm getting messy so what I've done is I've created the cluster I've chained one and then into the chain space there I've done a slip stitch so that's so let me show you again so one chain on there, go through, pull the yarn through to connect, take it all the way through that loop, chain one. That will create your second chain then. And then go back into this chain space here, where you started on this first square, and create your next cluster, like so. Okay, that's your corner cluster there, can you see it? Can you see that there? Right, now slip stitch into the next chain space, chain one and then create another cluster. So every time you finish a cluster, in the chain space opposite, you slip stitch, like so, chain one. The slip stitch does not count as a stitch, it's just a connector. Now we're going to do another cluster into our corner, one, two, three, and then slip stitch. So I go through with the hook, Pick up the yarn, two loops, take that loop through there, chain one, and then back in with our corner. Two, three. Okay, so that's how you cluster them together, and then you just proceed as normal once you pass that connector. So let's move my one over here because it's getting on my nerves a little bit. So you don't have to do gigantic squares at all if you don't want to. This way you can make as many little ones as you want, as many second rows as you want, and then when you come to put them together, you can just work them together in that last row. It's quite fun actually, I quite like working this way. It's a quick way to make a very simple granny square blanket so again I'm just following the pattern from the manual I know I'm working super quick because I want to show you how to do the third one Two. Um, obviously bear in mind if you're making um, so just continuing just finishing this round off and then we'll work into the next one so I'm at the point of finishing this one off. Okay, if you can't see that third chain, just find that first loop. There it is. And then just go back in and then just push the other one over and you've got both loops there. Look, so just take your time. Look at what you're doing. Take your time and place your hook and do one bit at a time until you're comfortable. Now quit rushing ahead just because other people are saying you should. You do it at your own pace and you do it until you master it. So we'll do the same again. We'll work in this one. Um, we're going to work it this way. So, and like you probably noticed, I'm working from that direction to that direction. So, again, get your wool in the right hand, tail towards you, and then take it round. I'm going to wrap it around that finger a little bit this time because this wool's a little bit loose on my fingers. Um, we're going to anchor what we're going to work into there with the wall behind it pinched between my finger and thumb and with the mouth in the middle. Go through there, one, two, three, and create that first cluster before we do our second cluster. 
So our chain three is our faith um, treble. So I've done a cluster and a chain. We're going to go into, hold on, let's just make sure we're getting this right. Let's go here, making sure we're coming with that facing towards us because I'll show you the reason why in a minute. Um, we've done one, chain one again, and then go back into our cluster. So, oops, in the tail here. There we go. And then we're going to work with that as our next chain slow. So, always checking what you're doing, checking where you're working. Now, I haven't done chain there, so chain one, work into that chain space, do that next cluster in our positive, well, sorry, negative space here. So, negative means nothing, positive means it's full. Okay, chain, slip stitch again, and then one chain, and then we're working straight into this cluster. One, two, three, four, sorry, three. <laughs> slip stitch, oh, hold on, I've got the chain, need one. So one, slip stitch, and then another, make a chain, space again. One into there, another one. And then straight into that corner, and then we're working on our sides again. Okay, chain one, and I'll lay it down for that and show you how it looks. Okay. Now I've chosen in these colours a warm tone. So you could do a series of these like this and then have borders and then do another one and another one or you could have lots of granny squares all together to make one blanket so clustering them together generally only works when you are using the cluster stitch um or you can double crochet it like i have done in the previous in one of the other videos um, but that's more level two. This is a level one way to join. You can join it through sewing as well, but I would probably do it. Stick to this way, it's a lot simpler. You already know how to do the cluster stitch and it's just a case of working between each chain space with a slip stitch. Obviously bearing in mind that chain one space or that chain two space. So I prefer to do it this way, where you're completing the round and you just work back on yourself. Some do just one row. Um, I personally prefer this way. Um, but everybody's different. There's lots of ways to do it. I like this way. Um, I think it's the simplest way for you to learn. And then again, find that chain three up, count from the bottom. One, two, three. Find that first chain and then the second one and just take it straight over and go again. There we go. And there might be better ways to do this. You could probably go into each stitch and do it that way. Obviously you've got to weave in the bits. I always leave the middle bits last in case I need to tighten these up because I do a magic circle um, or a magic ring. Um, I just leave those there. So like I say, you could go in and you could do little borders and then put them all together so you've got like layers. Um, so if you wanted to, for instance, let's do just give you an example. I'm making sure I'm working with my the right one now. Okay, so one, two, three. I'll just do a two in the corner this time because I'm going to do a closed granny square around the edges. So let's work into there. I'm just going to go around the one because I've got one there. So I'm corresponding my stitches to the stitch heads. So if there's three trebles in a the cluster, there's three stitches above it. If there's one in the chain space, then there's one there's a stitch around it. 
so you could do it that way. Oops. Here's these little and that way you know you've got an equal amount of stitches so you know there's one in the corner there um, Maybe we won't because it's going to our hands too fast. In there. Oops. If you split your wool, just go back into the stitch beforehand. Just realign your wool. Okay. Oops. Let's get that turn out of the way. I'm going to work around it. So I'm going to pull it along the horizon of my stitches which is I don't know if you can see it but if you there look then I'm going to work the stitches around it so I've got one here so that's going around it and then I'm going to have one there so that's going around it so I'm holding it I'm anchoring it as I'm holding the wall I'm anchoring it so it sits there look just there and I'm going in so you can see my hook it's over my hook Taking my yarn underneath it through that stitch space in there. Taking one into that chain space. And then I'm going to work one into that chain space there. And then one into there. So you can see how I'm working over it. So this is going to save me some time in the long run because I won't have to weave it in because I've worked it as I've gone along. It's a little bit fiddly, but once you get used to it and you master your anchoring, you'll be absolutely fine. So you can see how I've worked um, a border around it. So you could do that and then you could grow from there to create a rectangle. Maybe add some, some other granite squares in as you go and then you could probably do the same um, method here and then bring these together with a raised um, stitch. So one, two, and then we're just going to do two travels into this, oops, into this corner. like so. So that's basically that. You can then work in some raised stitches and different things, make some motifs from it. It's quite interesting to do. Oops, picked up my tail. So that tail can now go out of the way of it. I'm not interested in it anymore. So what I can do is just cut it like that. If you want it's good to have a good pair of sharp pointed scissors. Um, and you feel like going, I've just cut a stitch and I shouldn't have done. I'll put some finishing on there, be careful. Okay. Okay, so I've got another tail here because of where we've um, put these together. So again, do the same method. And I can cut this one in a bit as well. Sorry, my wall keeps not doing what it's supposed to do, it's going twice. There you go, you can see I'm working around that tile, taking it around my um, stitch. So you can see how it can come together 
and you could create lots of different ones we're working through it and then work them down perhaps create some nice little edges in here perhaps work um, some popcorn stitches in to give it some real texture but you can see how it comes together and you you haven't really although you've got this um these little loops here that's quite common but that's how you cluster them together um i have worked on a smaller hook for this size wall so it is coming up smaller but i do prefer a tighter stitch the other thing i wanted to show you was this is a mistake that i made while teaching because i wasn't looking i was too busy showing um how to do this as a demo but you may notice there's a slight difference between these two this one is the right facing way and this is the wrong facing way um, so be really mindful i've shown you how to do it with these um, and how to work but be really mindful because you can really mess up so as you're doing things even if you're part way just double check okay just double check you've got it the right way because that can, otherwise you're going to have a real problem but you can see how nicely it folds together sorry about all the weedy bits um, and it works really nice so there you go all done my lovelies